Hey there, uh, I'm representing a group called the Fang Collective. Um, and myself personally, I'm from Bristol and I live in Providence in District 4. And myself and the Fang Collective both uh, support this legislation. Um, I think an important piece of it is the concept of consent, uh, which is important across like our society as a whole. And just making sure that like when industry comes into places or in interpersonal relationships, just like really prioritizing that uh, concept of consent and permission. And I think it's really important uh, for the folks of Burrowville to have that permission, you know, to have to have that power to give the permission and give their consent before something that would harm them comes into their town. Um, sorry. Um, I support, you know, diversifying the energy facility siting board and adding more members. I think that's a really important piece of the bill. Um, I just want to touch real quick, just like 30 seconds maybe, on some of the conversation early about, like, the need for electricity, like, uh, in the grid and everything. So the ISO New England auction, which they do that three years in advance, uh, even, so, you know, Invenergy submitted their full 1,000 megawatts, only 485 megawatts got purchased at the auction. Even if you took that 485 megawatts out, there would, are, there would be a, a surplus in our region of 500 megawatts of electricity in three years. And you can go to ISO New England's website and read that right on their website, or there's some articles. Conservation Law Foundation has an article about it. Uh, another thing that happened, the price of electricity for our region plummeted 25% since the last auction. So Invenergy didn't think this was going to happen, right? Um, and now there's really no need for this power plant to be built. If this power plant is not built, you know, and, and the ISO New England takes into account, um, you know, the fact that the power plants are closing. That's all calculated in. So even if this power plant wasn't built, we would still have a surplus of energy in our region for years to come. Um, Another important concept is just like the history of the Energy Facility Siting Board. Uh, I believe it was created in 1986. Uh, someone, if that's incorrect, you know, please correct me. Um, and then Ocean State Power in Burville was built in 1988, 1989, right? So this board was created to build power plants in Burville, which is kind of messed up to think about that history. So I think when we're coming back to building another power plant in Burville, it's really a time to correct you know, the wrongs that were done when that first power plant was built there. Um, what, just real quick, just, uh, um, I saw like a couple versions of the bill and there's like, I wasn't quite clear on what the language was in terms of if it incorporated the Resilient R Rhode Island Act. Um, so that's one thing I would just like really urge if it could be added to the bill, just, you know, explicitly naming the Resilient R RI Act and that's something that the board has to take into consideration when making these decisions. Because obviously climate change is a huge, dis a, a huge concern and that's something that needs to be taken extremely seriously at every level of government. Um, and the last thing I would like to add, um, you know, this Burville uh, is in traditional Nipmuc territory. Um, in the 500 page application, they don't mention the Nip Nipmuc nation, which is a state recognized tribe. Um, so I think it's important, again, in all our legislation to like, you know, to think about decolonization and how we can like make sure that those that are most impacted by colonialism here are given some sort of voice in these decisions, right? Uh, I know there's like uh, indigenous uh, artifacts were found on the site, but really I think in the future going forward, you know, incorporating, you know, indigenous rights into uh, energy facility siting board decisions is something that I know personally I, I feel pretty strongly about. Um, but that's all I have. Thank you. So um, two things, because, again, obviously the Resilient Rhode Island Act, I've got a uh, – um, so in that you, 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 you want at least something where they're at least taking that into consideration as they're doing any kind of energy facility siting of any, any plants going down the road along the way. Totally. And, and then and the carbon reduction goals within that, that statute? Yeah, and I think um, – uh, I'm trying to remember how it went down. I think what they ended up doing was kind of kicking that to the, uh, to the PUC um, and opening a new docket there. Um, so I think if it's, like, explicitly named, you know, it's a law that, that I think passed almost unanimously, right, um, and pretty important law, pretty historic. And I think, you know, it, it would be good just to explicitly name that this board – when they're talking about fossil, building fossil fuel power plants, takes that really important law into account. And, and then when you're saying the Nipmuc Nation, the, um, uh, that, that tribe, did you mean specifically that they should be named out somehow within the Energy Facility Siting Board consideration? I'm not or, sure. Or I, I didn't know quite like, what you meant. 
Yeah, I think uh, what I meant by that is like when building infrastructure, you know, a lot of times we think of like, you know, um, but I just think it's really important that we honor indigenous rights and honor like whose traditional territory that is that we're building on, of uh, people that lived there for thousands of years. Um, so I think just like not specifically the Nipmucks, but just, uh, you know, something in there where like the board needs to consult with like the uh, the folks, the people that historically lived in that location. So, yeah, like, like our, um, yeah, so looking at, at, at long, long ago cultures that, that might be in and trying to value them in this, uh, in this decision making and process. And some sort of formal consultation process, which, you know, at the federal level, uh, someone mentioned FERC, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. I mean, they have formal consultation. That's part of the, the process, right, is that, you know, nation to nation interaction. So I think that could be replicated at some level at the, at the state. Thank you. Any other questions for Nick? Thank you very much, Nick. Thanks.